Hello, it's a pleasure to uh, be speaking here. And uh, I uh, let me get my slide. The uh, uh, I, I did wiki a long time ago, and I've done a few more. Uh, we the current wiki is a, a, a data wiki. It's a, a federated wiki, and and we've recently added graphs to it that are based on a really kind of a clone of Neo4j, uh, which uh, works a lot better, I would say, than any other attempt at graphs we'd done over the years. And I, I'm interested in why it works so well. And so what I'd like to do is talk about that in the context of a couple projects, and especially this thing we call the Super Collaborator. That's a, a version of Wiki without, with a different sort of storage mechanism. So uh, this is this is how I think of it. Uh, you know, Wiki and Neo4j have a lot in common. You know, uh, uh, they have nodes and we have nodes. Our nodes we call pages, and and we have links and they have links, but their links they call uh, relationships. Uh, you know, they they the, the thing that impresses me most and has drawn me into Neo4j is the computational ability that those nodes and links can mean more than they ever meant in Wiki. And so when we draw that into the client side environment in Wiki, we find that we, you know, not for nearly as large a grasp, but for, you know, hundreds or thousands of nodes, we, uh, we have a, a, a right behind the glass sort of feeling. And uh, so it makes uh, makes them browsable. And, you know, I, I mentioned plasticity. That means we, we like to set things up so that when you put them next together, they, they, they figure out how to hook together. This is what a, a federated wiki tab looks like. We'll have uh, here I have four different pages and they all have something to do with data. In this case, it's about graph data. And as it moves from left to right, it moves through a couple of different stages in that third slide and then is rendered by uh, GraphViz, which is just a standard plugin in Wiki. So the, the computation happens before it's rendered. It isn't a drawing tool. It's a representation tool. And, and here it happens to be representing stuff related to a, a, a learning process that was developed by uh, Thompson Morrison. And he's been very active in using Wiki and is very excited about using this uh, graph stuff too. And I'll say something more about that in a minute. But let me let me show you what we think of it as developers, that in Wiki, it, we handle a lot of data and that could be lists of things or tables or trees. We use JSON. There's, there's good... Uh, text representations for these things that are kind of devoid of any application. They're just just that. But but uh, in the client, we didn't have a, a good representation for a graph, except what might be associated with some, some drawing program. But then it has all the drawing stuff in it. You know, we like the uh, Arrows app, which uh, is a Neo4j thing, and that doesn't have too much. But it is uh, still... Ours is simpler. Let me draw a picture of it. And, and by the way, I mentioned, you know, lens making because it was the lens makers that made a, a real advance in science. And, and we feel a little like lens makers by uh, just bringing capability to the wiki for other people to explore. Uh, this is uh, this is what we put in memory. We if you want a graph, you say new graph. And uh, that uh, allocates room for nodes and relations. And nodes and relations have enough room in them as just JavaScript objects to be able to keep track of references to others. The, the graph abstraction that wraps that all up just keeps the, keeps the pointers straight. And, and I just love this idea that, that the reason why this works so well is that the relationships are materialized, pre-materialized. You... You know what the relationships are because you put the relationships in, and uh, I give that a a barn star. A barn star is is a compliment that it's a wiki thing. It's kind of like that gold star you get when you were well behaved, I guess, in in kindergarten. But uh, uh, I'll 
you know, when something really works for us, especially in this idea of things can flex to be what it needs to be based on how you're using it, then, uh, then on my slide deck here, I'm going to hand out some barn stars. So this is a little closer look at what Thompson was doing. He's tracking the, the learning behavior, in this case, of two different students. See, we actually have uh, tracks for four different students, but we picked two students and then they merged them together and said, these two students were, you know, curious and wondered about things and were surprised as they do things. And that leads to more curiosity. And, and, and this, is, this is just tracing out the, the nodes of a history, but, but it turned gold there where the two students touch the same thing. And, that, and that's what we're really trying to do is find out how the students are working to create excitement and curiosity and learning with the other students. And uh, it works. This is a, I, I give a barn star to Jess. Jess is the, uh, uh, the teacher in a fourth grade class and she's uh, adopted this uh, scenario for uh, what stages somebody goes through when they're doing independent study. And so these are three independent students and she just interviews them. She say, you know, well, what were you looking at today? And what surprised you about that? That sort of stuff. And, and then they offer up this stuff and she writes it down and, and they become very interested in how she thinks of their learning and are, are proud to describe how they learn to their, their students. So that's, this is on paper, the same thing I was just showing you there. This is actually uh, Thompson on the right, Jess on the left and David in the middle are three educators working on this project. And this is them writing in Wiki over the past two years about why it all works. And so this is a, on its way to be a book. I showed you what Thompson's other book looked like a minute ago. I should have pointed that out. But as they authored independently, that makes this thread that goes down the page. And then the uh, brighter blue aqua color uh, are things that they call the garden. There's the story. And then the garden is all the things about the environment. And these eventually link up. But this is how they're going to turn these three author stories into a volume that makes sense to educators and is, is convincing. Now, this was actually rendered not in Wiki. We built a tool that says all the, all the graph stuff that we've done in Wiki in the last uh, six months, it feels really exciting. Well, let's put it all into an app it, by itself, which we call the Super Collaborator, and, and see what we can do there. It gives us a lot more room to draw complicated graphs. It also lets us explore different UI techniques that we did on pages in Wiki, but when we put it all here together, it feels especially good. And what I want to do is I want to describe these two, uh, uh, the, the, the green and the brown boxes on the left, because they're both ways to control what's on the screen. So, so the, uh, uh, any user in there is going to see the same green panel as anybody else. This is a uh, uh, single shared distributed environment is what the croquet is described at, and it's bit identical for every user. So if I add a, a, a graph for a student here, or if a student, if, if the whole class is on this, if we have 30 people on here, they'll see the same thing, and then they can do with it as they will. They can select things, drag them into that uh, uh, mixing area, uh, or, or even create new stuff. And the way we create stuff, this is, this is we, we describe this as sort of a, a systems-oriented chat system. And the way you chat is to, uh, is, is, is to select something from this kind of relationship. Now, this is actually uh, a, a, another one of our uh, community members, uh, Mark Pearson, is interested not so much in education, but in community services. And this is his model. It's what I had a slide of, but you could say, how do groups organize for action based on an ideal? And so I, uh, I picked a person here. I said, let's start with a person. And I type Michael, because I know a Michael. And, 
And, and, and, and as soon as I did that, it says, well, what is Michael, what ideal does he hold or what, what group does he foster? And I picked groups. So I just, I just followed this from here to here. We call this a thematic sketch. And it says, uh, in, in this world, we would say, well, what is, well, it's, it's the, uh, neo for j community, of course. And, and I could keep going and what actions they do and what ideals were furthered by, you know, those actions and so forth. And, you know, I end up stringing out a kind of long, now I can actually scroll back and say, well, Michael does more than just foster groups. I could just, you know, scroll up and down here and keep growing this, uh, this graph. And, and, and what's neat is, you know, while I'm doing that, that shows up in this. You can watch me develop as there and kind of watch what I'm doing and so forth. I would like to mention I resisted calling this a schema because I think, uh, you know, some people will beat you over the head with their schema and it's really an authoritarian way to tell you what to do. And we like things that are a little more open than that. But this is just makes it easy to describe something and you could describe something else. You say, well, we're going to talk about learning journeys instead of uh, organizing for action. And you just drag a new scheme over that. And that changes us to ask different questions. So that's a pretty neat thing. But it's also reasonable to ask, well, well where, did, where did Pearson get this idea that we needed a tetrahedron? And that turned out that, that he did a, a work with a dozen... Uh, uh, community services in the county where he was. He was in, in Whatcom County, which is near Seattle, Washington. And um, and then put all that into Neo4j. And he wasn't sure what he's going to do it, but he was sure if he had it all down that that was flexible enough to do it. And he discovered this command where you just say, uh, call schema. And it draws a picture of how you organized your data. And he was surprised to see this tetrahedron show up there. He studied this tetrahedron, and I'll give him a barn star for uh, this. And and uh, uh, by the time I got involved, he had reduced it and was very confident about that. I shared that confidence with uh, Thompson, who says, "Oh, can I can I change it to be more about a learning journey than a, a geographic journey or versus an action?" And, and, you know, yeah, make it be about what you want to talk about. And that, uh, that, that has worked pretty well. Thompson, and, I mean, uh, Mark and his colleagues are studying a little deeper. This is, this is a Vensim diagram that explains all those arcs that we just might name something. But this is them trying to figure out why those four things work. There they are in color. And uh, I expect as this develops, We'll find even more ways to use it. And uh, just just so you know that this is something you could play with. It's out there. You're welcome to uh, find your way in. Uh, you'll, you'll be dropped into the uh, Hypertech Super Collaborator by just going to HSC, Hypertech Super Collaborator, .fed.wiki.org. And in its welcome banner, it says, would you like to see the documentation? And that takes you to a wiki where there's things like, well, you can say more about this idea. What, tell us where this idea came from. And that has a link to our implementation of uh, property graphs in JavaScript. Um, and in fact, I almost gave myself a barn star there uh, because down below the fold here, it, it describes our implementation of, uh, of uh, uh, the query language. Uh, cipher. We have a, we have a mini cipher that does the match part and then relies on JavaScript for the rest, and uh, that's pretty neat in many ways too. I could give another talk about that, but instead, I think I'll ask if there's any uh, questions. <laughs>